Hey guys, today we're going to talk about elves in Warcraft. Oh wait, not those elves. Or those ones. Or those ones. Is that one even an elf? Alright, stop. Okay, okay, there's a lot of elves in WoW. Let's get to the bottom of this. So, how do we get here? Why are there just so many different types of elves? Well, we gotta go back to the beginning. Well, actually not that far back, but to the Zandalari Empire. And yes, our story starts with trolls, as most things in Warcraft do. Tazdingo! Yes! After building a giant empire, which we'll get to in a future video, some of the trolls split off into separate tribes, such as the Gurabashi and the Darkspear. One of these small tribes, known as Dark Trolls, found themselves near the Well of Eternity, a giant arcane battery left behind by the Titans tugging a little too hard on Yasharaj. Oops. Fuck. This massive well of energy, it started to influence the Dark Trolls, slowly turning them into what we today would call a Night Elf. Oh, this new wall. Which starts this whole mess we gotta deal with. The Night Elves, in-universe referred to as Kaldori, would use the Well of Eternity to build one of the greatest empires Azeroth had ever seen, covering a large swath of the Kalimdor megacontinent. This empire would be separated into two sects. The regular Kaldori, which you know today as the majority of Night Elves in the Alliance, basically the Tree Huggers, and the Highborn, the magic-wielding upper class of Night Elf society led by Queen Ajara. Now Ajara, she's kind of a big deal. The Highborn and the regular Kaldori followed her every whim due to just being in sheer awe of her. No, really, she is canonically so gorgeous that everyone just kind of went along with what she said. Her uh, cataclysm model just isn't doing her justice, apparently. Regardless, she would turn out to not have their best interests at heart, seeking great power, or maybe something else. Ajar would align herself with the Burning Legion and use the Well of Eternity that had built their empire to open a portal for Azeroth's first demon invasion. This kicks off what is known as the War of the Ancients. But we really do not have enough time to dig into all of that lore today. So to put a neat bow on it, we're just going to fast forward right to the end. The regular Kaldori rebelled against Queen Ajara and the Loyalist Highborn, really leaning into their tree-hugging roots to become the first druids in order to fight her back. And this is going to be our first big split of elves. You have those standard night elves that fought off the loyalists and stopped the Burning Legion. Then we have a few complications on the other side. For example, during the war, Ajar wanted to open a second demonic portal in a major city of the Empire, Suramar. But this plan led to the highborn of the city to question their loyalty to the queen. Grand Magistrate Elisand was not down with the plan and led her people to kick Ajar's forces out of the city. And once successful, they joined up with the Kaldoi resistant. Never mind. They used an ancient Titan artifact to surround their city in an impenetrable dome. They were kind of betting the Burning Legion would win the war, so they decided to peace out. Unfortunately, though, the barrier that had secluded them from the world started to take its effect on the Highborn of Surmar, changing their appearance into what we today recognize as modern Nightborn. Eventually, the barrier comes down during the Legion expansion, and they still don't vibe with Night Elves, so they end up with the Horde. This tends to be a touchy subject with the Alliance, though. I wouldn't bring it up. And just a quick side tangent. The Nightborn kind of goofed up, didn't they? They shut themselves off from the world, assuming it would be destroyed. It wasn't. And sat in their bunker, assuming everything around them had been destroyed by the Legion. However, by the time they finally let the barrier down, turns out most of the time, demons weren't around, barring some exceptions. But now their city is demon central, with the only thing separating their city from the main portal of the invasion being a broken bridge. Sheesh, really missed out on the good times. But let's get back to subject. While small set of the Highborn separate off into Suramar, the vast majority of Ajar loyalists would fall under two groups, what would become the High Elves and the really loyal that would become the Naga. For the High Elves, after the war, the Night Elves banned the practice of arcane magic, under the assumption that its use would help the Legion find the planet once again. The Highborn, who had spent their entire lives studying the Arcane, simply could not abstain from the use of magic. With no other choice, a contingent of the Highborn would exile themselves to the continent, which would eventually be known as the Eastern Kingdoms, and they would establish the Kingdom of Quel'Thalas. Separated from the influence of the Well of Eternity, 
these highborn would change appearance and become what we would today recognize as high elves. So take note of those blue eyes. That's an important detail that's going to come up later. As for the Naga, Queen Ajara would make a bargain after the war with the old god Nazoth. She learned nothing from her last dark bargain and would be transformed by his power into a fish person. Those still loyal to Ajara would follow in her footsteps and adopt this new fishy form. So yes, all the fish people that you see in Warcraft are actually night elves that made a deal with an old god to look like this. So yeah, let's return to our high elf friends. They would find success on their new continent and would end up having a whole ton of lore, ranging from fighting off trolls, teaching humans the way of the arcane, and a variety of other things. But now we're going to take a pretty significant time jump, about 10,000 years, and snap to the Third War. Uh-oh, Arthas and Scourge are devouring the Eastern Kingdoms, and the High Elves of Quethalos are no exception. To be honest, Arthas is a pretty big deal, and I'm going to be upfront with you guys, the High Elves are pretty screwed. So screwed, in fact, that about 90% of them are going to be killed by the Scourge. This is pretty rough on the High Elves in their culture. And to honor those that they lost, that being a vast majority of their people, renamed their population to the Blood Elves, which you can find in the modern day Horde. As to why they end up on the Horde, that's a story for another time. And just a quick note, you still might see some High Elves that didn't adopt the name Blood Elf poking around in today's modern alliance. As for why Blood Elves, until recently, are seen with green eyes as compared to High Elves blue, after their loss to Arthas, the High Elves lost their font of magic, the Sunwell, which was their version of the Well of Eternity they had created on the Eastern Kingdoms. Now, if you remember from earlier, High, now Blood, Elves aren't able to live without a source of magic like the Well of Eternity or the Sunwell. So in a desperate attempt to feed their addiction, Blood Elves would learn to use the power of Fell to fuel themselves, tinting their eyes green. They got off lucky though, the poor orcs are still mini Hulk knockoffs. However, in modern day WoW, this ordeal has been fixed. Yippee! With the Sunwell being back to normal, Blood Elves can be spotted with eyes ranging from the trad green, throwback blue, or an inspiring new gold. A little further in the timeline, we're going to reach the Cataclysm expansion, where we meet the Shendralar, a subset of Highborn that didn't follow the Blood Elves to the Eastern Kingdoms, and still look like traditional Night Elves. These Elves, after a questline and a so-so canon book, would rejoin Kaldori society and the Alliance. Now, these aren't a separate playable race like other flavors of elves, since they kind of just look like playable night elves, but they are what you are playing as if you select a mage night elf. This explains why night elves, number one magic haters, are able to play mage in modern WoW, in case you were wondering. But back to the folks in the Eastern Kingdom, we're going to make another jump in the timeline here and go to the Legion expansion. As you may have deduced, we have one more set of playable elves to talk about, the Void Elves. And to be honest, these guys are at most like 100 people and mostly exist to give the Alliance the Blood Elf models they've been wanting for over 10 years. As for the lore, these elves are outcasts who delved into the power of the Void and gained a purplish tint of their skin, but a totally different vibe from the regular purple elves and even some tentacles. Ew. Outcasts from Blood Elf society, these elves rejoined the Alliance under a pioneer of edgy elves, Illyria Windrunner, who's going to play a big part in the war within. She and the Void Elves use their Void powers to help fight back the Horde during the Fourth War. So, as to why I say the Void Elves could be, at most, a graduating class in Wyoming, is due to just the extreme amount of division you've now done on the Highborn. Let's take a step back and just see the crazy path we have to go from Troll to Void Elf. Okay, so, step one. Trolls to Dark Trolls, the OG split. Then they go to the Well of Eternity and become Night Elves. Some have magic, and now they're split. They fight a war and some get exiled, with a subset of that subset heading off to the Eastern Kingdoms. And they end up looking like this. And then 90% of them get wiped out by zombies, of which a subset change themselves to Blood Elves. And then, finally a small fraction of those surviving, exiled, relocated Kaldori decide to dabble in void energies and get exiled again. Whew. The elves sure like to split off, don't they? Probably what Metzen is getting at when talking about reuniting the elven tribes of Azeroth in Midnight, huh? 
Well, now we've done a quick run through of the playable races of elves in Warcraft, and even a peek at the Naga. Now, this list is far from exhaustive. If we learned anything about elves, it's that they just love to split off and do their own thing. You've got satyrs, sand lane, dark rangers, and tons of others we didn't get a chance to look at in this video. But I'm looking forward to making future videos on elves and everything else Warcraft. And I hope to see you there too. Make sure to subscribe and click that little notification bell. I've always wanted to say that. This has been Six, and thanks for joining me.